Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back and uh, saying good, good Sunday afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon where I am, and uh, it's still a little chilly here in the uh, mid-Atlantic slash northeast. For those of you who are watching around the world, uh, we sometimes refer to this part of the country as the mid-Atlantic states or, or the northeast. So we're above the southern states, but just below New England. And uh, so it's, this time of year, it's always a little bit warmer outside than it is in the house, right? You know what I'm talking about. So you don't really want to turn the heat on, but you just want to take that chill off. And so I've lit one of my little fake logs, uh, what do they call them? I forget what you call them, but when I burn a wood fire, a nice big roaring wood fire, it really warms this place up and it's not quite that chilly. So we're just going to take the chill off with, uh, with that. And this really is a this and that. So if you tuned in for a thrift haul, you're not getting one today, but you are going to get thrift hauls later this week. Now, I will say, just please ignore that clock and that clock. Neither one of them know what time it is and they all chime at inappropriate times. I'll tell you about that some other day. We'll wait till he's finished his business. I'm drinking out of the old porcelain or enamel. Uh, there it goes again. How many of you do that? You're right in the middle of a sentence. You're right in the middle of it. And cream and green. <sighs> sipping out of my cream and green enamel teacup. What are you sipping this afternoon? This is black coffee. And uh, I'm eating some... Uh, <laughs> pretzels <laughs> honey honey mustard pretzels and you know if you get allergy uh, sinuses and things and I do this time of the year and if I sound kind of eh, sometimes it's allergies and sometimes it's just because I'm from New Jersey and we kind of talk like this um, I can say that because I'm a New Jersey native I can make fun of myself but I do have some sinus issues dip these in horseradish now I'm not talking about that sort of horseradish mayonnaise mix you get some good ground 100% horseradish. That'll open you up. Forget the sinus medication. It works for me. Maybe it will work for you. So what am I going to do today? Well, what I'm going to do is we're going to have an audience uh, participation clip, which I pre-recorded yesterday, and I'm going to insert that at the end. Lots of photographs that viewers have sent in, and I'm going to give some shout outs going all the way back to Christmas. Uh, of last year and so I hope you'll stay tuned for that because that's very exciting you're going to get to see some of Salem's fans who uh, watch him across the country and uh, let's see what else am I going to do today we're going to answer the question what in the heck are these but before I do that I'll say uh, I'll just quickly wish everyone well just give you a quick update things here in New Jersey Pennsylvania New York uh, have really progressed and so as many of you we are pretty much uh, off the streets unless we need food or medical attention so I spent a couple of days making sure that it seems like everybody in my family is, be is between the ages of 75 and my great uncle is 93 uh, so just making sure they're all hunkered down where they are in various parts of Pennsylvania, New York, and, and uh, New Jersey, which they are. We, everybody has everything they need. And, you know, I said, said goodbye. <laughs> I don't know when I'll see you again. Five days, 10 days, 20 days, I don't know. Uh, but we are all in each other's prayers every night, and that uh, unites us and gives us strength. I hope that you as well uh, find strength wherever it may come from but uh, certainly if you can if you can send your prayers up to God and just trust in him uh, it, it's a big help speaking of that I know I jump around a lot 
later tonight, now this is Sunday, I don't know what time tonight, and you guys out in California get me three hours early, later, um, I'm going to release probably in about an hour from now, from when this video comes up, just a quick little, uh, quick little video, maybe about 10 minutes long. I don't even speak in it. You don't see me or hear me or anything. It's just um, four old hymns that you're going to love. If you, if you kind of, you know, grew up in the church, uh, these are hymns that even in mainstream uh, Christian denominations, you don't hear that much anymore. But I grew up uh, in a very old-fashioned church, and we, we sang out of the old 1926 hymnal, which of course had hymns in it written in the 1850s. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about, those good old-fashioned hymns. Well, I put about four of them together. You're going to love these. They're beautiful recordings, and I just added a few pictures and a few little scripture verses um, just something to put up to maybe give some encouragement uh, and, and share a little bit more about my faith with you. So, uh, and there'll be no commercials. I didn't monetize that. I don't want to make any money off of it. I just want you to maybe, if you're feeling stressed out today, give it a try. You know, and even if you say, oh my, ugh, I don't think I want to listen to a bunch of old hymns. Well, just, we just give it a try. You can always just, you know, if, it, if you tune in and you go, eh, well, then you can tune out. But I hope you'll watch it. Maybe just read Read, the, you know, the little scriptures that I'm going to put on there. Um, I hope that you'll do that. Okay, so that's, I had, a, I had a good time putting that together yesterday, and I, I hope you'll watch it and listen. Uh, okay. I really am jumping all around, aren't I? Let's do this. The contest, it wasn't really a contest, was what in the heck are these? Now, if you didn't see this video, you got to go back and watch it or you're totally lost. We took a look at these two things the other day and determined that this is the way they stand. The only mark on them is patent applied for, which is embossed on the bottom. And my guess was, and my thought was, they had, that they had something to do with some kind of commercial use rather than domestic use. In other words, some kind of display, something or other. That was my gut feeling on these, is that they that they somehow displayed something, and I was thinking jewelry store. Uh, and we have the answer to what these are. So let's put these down here on the floor, and I'm gonna try to go through this quickly. I got a lot of responses, and it took me, I mean, I had to, look, it's a whole page of stuff I had to write down, and even back here, and then I printed this out. So let's do this first. Here are some of the guesses that were wrong. <laughs> uh, just wrong. Incorrect, but I, I appreciate your guesses. They're great guesses, okay? I'm not naming any names, but this is what some people thought. They're just purely decorative. They serve no purpose, they're purely decorative. Pedestals for figurines, chafing dish holder, finger vase made by Viking Glass Company, wig stand, hat stand, fern stand, jewelry display stands, church or wedding candle holders. Okay, those were all incorrect guesses, and I, had a good time and I love your guesses. Now, we had some other folks that gave correct guesses but no proof. In other words, they said, well, this is what I think it is. Julie and Michelle, uh, we're gonna get to Michelle again in a minute. There might be two Michelles. They gave uh, correct guesses but no pictures, no links, but they were right. I still didn't tell you what they are. Okay, I'll tell you what they are now. They're shelf supports. Now these are the folks who um, guessed correctly that they were shelf supports and they sent links to me uh, to other auctions, other people that are selling these. And we'll talk more about that in a minute because we have to be careful with this. But um, let's see, Maria, Now Voyager, and Mary, they all sent me an Etsy link which identifies these as shelf supports. So we did get links from those viewers and uh, just all saying that they were glass shelf supports. Uh, Cecilia's art sent an eBay link showing this upside down and calling it a vase and asking $70 for it. Deborah sent an eBay link where there was a pair. They were asking $167 for the pair. Tech Savvy sent a link Chris sent an eBay link calling these Heisey glass. 
Mimsy sent a link. And then in email, Lisa sent a photograph, um, which was correct. Uh, Ellen, DJM, Ruby, and MayBB3 all sent emails with either photographs or links. But it was uh, Tammy who sent the only photograph of these in use. And I'm going to put Tammy's photograph up right here to show you. This is a picture of a soda fountain. And we'll zoom in and you can see, clearly see that the shelf supports here are being used in this soda fountain to hold up glass vases. So Tammy was able to find that somewhere on the net of these actually uh, being used. Now, let me go back for a second to, uh, there, were, there were two subscribers who uh, sent links, but actually were able to identify these as being made by the Westmoreland Glass Company. So they're not high C, uh, they are made by the Westmoreland Glass Company. And that was ZRP8Y23, also known as David, and Tiffany205. Uh, those two folks were able to actually send in documentation that they were manufactured by the Westmoreland Glass Company. And I'll read to you what it says out of the Glass ID and Value Guide by Charles West Wilson. Uh, and it says, uh, clear glass paneled, clear glass panel pattern supports were used in stores to display products. So any store. Uh, this, the matching pair by the Westmoreland Glass Company circa 1913 mold number or blank number 1024 has a bottom marked patent applied for and these say patent applied for on the bottom. Only these earlier supports were signed and when Westmoreland was denied the patent, the mark had to be removed. So we know these are the early ones with the uh, patent applied for mark. It would be interesting to find out why the patent was removed. I'm sorry, why the patent was denied, I don't know. And there's no patent number. I would love to look up the patent number uh, and actually read the description of Westmoreland Glass Company's uh, description of these supports, but I really haven't dug around for the patent number. Now, I said I was gonna get back to uh, there's one other person I want to mention, and that's Michelle. This is great, Michelle, and I applaud you for this because Michelle wrote in and said, the consensus on the internet seems to be that they are Art Deco era shelf risers. Yours, of course, would be examples of two different heights. Aha, she says in her last sentence, since I don't believe everything on the internet without proof, uh, it's only a guess unless she actually sees photographs of them in use. Michelle, you are so, 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 so right. Because I do this, you know, 40, 50 hours a week. And there are so many mistakes on the internet. Um, and a lot of times folks will Google something and they'll send me um, somebody else's picture and somebody else's description or an auction link and they'll say, ah, here's what it is, here's proof. And folks, that is not proof that anything is what it is because a lot of times something will be erroneously listed and then innocently people just cut and paste and then the die is cast. That's how we get misinformation that just takes on a life of its own. So Michelle, you are right. Um, and I, I, I'm not criticizing anybody. I, I'm not. I don't want you to, to have that impression. Um, but it's just so very, very true that uh, you have to be careful when you read somebody else's description about something. Um, they may or may not have it right. And I do my best to put out correct information. Am I unbuttoned? No. Uh, <laughs> I do my best to put out correct information uh, because... I enjoy learning and I want to try to be as accurate as possible. So thank you everybody. That was a lot of fun and I have to tell you, to be honest, the next time I do one of these contests, I think I'm just going to announce the winner and I just, because they're just so, it's, there are just so many people who contribute, it makes it, you know, it took, it took me over an hour to sort of go through all the emails and write everything down and all the things and 
Uh, so I think from now on, if we, if we do a contest, I'm just going to say, okay, and the winner was. But it was fun to do that, and it's fun to participate with you, and uh, and I enjoyed it. So I want you to know that. Okay, so they are West, they are circa 1913 Westmoreland glass shelf supports, and I see people asking. Everything from 20 bucks for a pair up to $250 for a pair. I don't know. What can you do with these two that are different sizes? Well, you can do all kinds of things, but oh, that fire is going pretty well now. Okay. So, now don't forget, stay with me because the audience participation is at the end. But we're going to do another what in the heck is it. Actually, I'm going to show you two things because we have some time to do some research. Um, I'm going to show you... A piece of porcelain and a piece of glass and I do happen to know what they are and who made them but I want to throw it out there and see if you guys can figure it out and let me know what you think okay so first of all what is this let me kind of zoom get get a little closer here for you oh my goodness okay let's get over here what is this Turn it all the way around for you to see it. Beautiful hand-painted scenery on it. I'll even show you the bottom, the bottom. Uh, okay, might be a little blurry. What is it? Now, there's something that I am not showing you. It's not very nice of me to not show you this. Um, I'm holding on to these curtains because I I was going to tell you something else about those, but I might save it for, save it for another video. Uh, do you know what it is? I'm going to give you a clue. I want you to look at the lid. I want you to look at the inside of the lid. That's a clue. Okay? That's all I'm going to tell you. And that's all I'm going to show you. What is it? And lastly, who made this beautiful piece of glass, and how old is it? Can you see? I'm not sure that it's showing up very well. I'll ping it just so you can see what it sounds like when I ping it. And the lighting might be off, so this might be tricky. Um, but we'll throw it out there anyway. What's that? Okay. So we talked about the glass shelf supports. We did the what is it. I told you about my little um, hint, selection of hymns coming later on tonight. And also, let me tell you about this coming week so that you'll know. No thrifting. That ended four or five days ago. But I do have quite a backlog of items that I'm going to actually be able to do some thrift hauls and show you some things that you haven't seen before. I am also going to be listing a lot of new things in the old curiosity shop because I do have the time to do it and my shop is pretty anemic right now. If you're waiting on a package from me, I have 12 packages sitting out there by the front door. I will escape Monday morning, get them to the post office as soon as the post office opens and then get back in here and lock and shut my door. So those will be the last packages going out for uh, a while. And that includes any auctions that are end, either ending yesterday or ending today. So uh, I am still shipping, but as you know, there just may be a delay in things uh, because that's the reality at the moment. So I trust you're all doing well. Gonna have lots of videos for you this week. Hopefully every one, a video every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, with lots of different uh, topics, something a little bit different. Not gonna be thrift hauls every day, but I think you'll enjoy them anyway. Listen, I'm gonna start off by saying Salem the Cat has a lot of fans out there. We're gonna start off with Paisley. Look at that handsome cat right there with that nice little tuxedo outfit on. Uh, Kim is the proud parent of Paisley the cat. Oh, no, that one's perfect. I love that. 
Very cute. Okay, that's Paisley the cat. And, uh, oh, there's one more. Well, you can see how long it's been. It's fall, and actually, we had the first day of spring a couple of days ago, so that's how long I've been holding on to these. But now this, let's try to zoom in a little bit here. A viewer from uh, York, Pennsylvania sent this in. This is from Joe Lee. She took a picture. This is a beautiful old building in the center of York, Pennsylvania, and it reminded her so much of the old curiosity shop. And it does. Thanks for sending it in, Julie. I appreciate it. Alicia, uh, this is her vintage dresser. And Alicia purchased this dresser tray here from the old curiosity shop. And it looks absolutely fantastic on your very 1930s vanity there with an old Christmas card. And that's probably a military photograph of someone in your family. I appreciate you sending that in. Pam and George have a cat named Castor. Here's Castor the cat up in New York State who likes to watch uh, Salem on TV. Thank you, Pam and George, for your encouraging emails, too. Very nice. And we're going to take a look here. Now, this looks like the backdrop that Dee has in her kitchen up in Niagara Falls, but this is sent to us from Garland, and this was how he does um, a little bit of his Christmas display some of the vintage kitchen items that I believe he said was uh, belong to his grandmother. Nice work, Garland. I like it. Here's the living room. Uh, uh, here's the dining room. You know what? Let's zoom in. I don't know. How about you folks? When I go to somebody's house, I'm always spying in their uh, china closet. So Garland, we're going to zoom in on your china. Ooh, we're going to zoom in on your china closet. I hope you dusted. <laughs> he didn't know this was going to happen. Oh, I see some Belique right here. Jeffrey will like that. Looks like Belique. And some nice porcelain up there and some crystal goblets down here. Very nice garland. And uh, I like your table setting here. A piece of depression glass. And a paperweight. Okay, let's get... Um, and look at this back on the wall. Beautiful. Beautiful old charger, I guess it is. Here is Captain Morgan. Lynn sent this in. Captain Morgan is a beautiful, beautiful boy we see there. Looks like a nice, friendly, healthy cat. Hi, Captain Morgan. Mary is reminding us that it's springtime. And she sent us this beautiful photograph of some of the flowers that she has picked. I appreciate that, Mary. And then I'm, I, I, ugh, I forget who sent this to me and I apologize, but was, I was talking quite a while ago about the big organ in, uh, in Atlantic City, the, the mid Merlash organ. Uh, wait, is it a mid Merlash? Anyway, forget that part. The pipe organ in the uh, Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City that would be played... Uh, during the Miss America pageant, and one of my viewers sent in her, I believe this is her grandmother, as Miss York, Miss York, Pennsylvania. We just had a picture of York a minute ago. And again, I, I have, I apologize because I can't remember who sent this in, but there's her grandmother in her Miss York out, Miss York ribbon, and uh, they used to measure women's bathing suits. They would uh, patrol the streets patrol the beaches rather in the 1920s you've seen those photographs where they actually take a tape measure and if the uh, swimsuit is too provocative showing too much thigh you would be put off, taken off the beach and I guess arrested so they moved this part uh, to Baltimore uh, annual national beauty pageant Miss America in Baltimore Maryland and this is 1929 uh, interesting. So I appreciate the viewer who sent that in. Chris in Canada is enjoying his little uh, Made in Japan piece. I appreciate that, Chris. Wonderful uh, grandfather clock back there that he says has been in his family for quite some time. Let's see. Okay, this is the Easter Bunny that Mary sent, or rather that Mary purchased from the old curiosity shop. And uh, I like how she's using it for a planter there. Very cute. Kelly paid $12 for this wonderful Depression-era clock. Good score, Mary. Kelly, I'm sorry. 
Roberta was inspired by the restoration work that I did on my kitchen chairs and she got hers out and scrubbed them up as well. Look how beautiful the chrome is, or chromium is on those kitchen chairs. Looks just like an ice cream sundae. Evelyn did some digging and she found out what the image of the charmer looks like and surprise it does not contain a snake. Now this is the puzzle that's missing pieces that I didn't put together but uh, a lot of people have been asking me to do it any anyway just to see how many pieces are missing. So um, I'm not that stir crazy yet to put together puzzles with missing pieces but it may come to that. We'll see how long this thing continues. Uh, we all know what this thing is. That is not Salem the cat, that is Zini, I think is how we pronounce it, and Annie sent Zini the cat, uh, and handsome looking cat as well, wonderful black cats. And this is a dish that belonged to her, uh, that her mother gave her. She says she was digging around in her mother's china closet, found it, and asked for it, and her mother gave it to her, and I think... If it, that it's the cameo pattern. I'm not. Sh I can't tell exactly, but there's a right here. You can just barely see. There's a dancing, um, a, a dancing sort of 1920s looking girl in in this area, and and that's the cameo. Uh, what's called the pattern is called cameo. The producer company who made it. I just can't remember at the moment. And then this is Figaro the cat who belongs to Brandy. Brandy sent this in and Figaro is busy watching me in my wrinkled shirt <clears throat> and yes I do know how to iron and elderly poodle sent in this adorable picture of her 17 year old chihuahua. Bless his or her heart. I don't have the name but boy does he or she just look like the king of the hill all wrapped up in that blanket. That is really cute. And then I just don't have any pictures, but I do want to say hello to Brian from Florida who, is, who collects the green Eastern Airlines serving dishes. I'm still looking for more of those for you, Brian. And I want to remember Marie who spent this last Christmas, uh, was the first Christmas in 50 years without her husband. And uh, so I, I, I did keep you in my thoughts and it took me forever to answer your email. Marie, I apologize, but uh, we've been chatting a little bit about good grief. What do you do after all those years together and all the memories? And uh, it has given me a really good idea to maybe talk about that a little bit in an upcoming video. So I, I want to do that. So from my home to yours and my cup of coffee to yours, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. <laughs>